we're gonna go help some people out in the Appalachian Mountains down in eastern Kentucky. She's a real beauty, Clark. Heck yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. They ran it through, through a piece of PVC pipe. It's not too bad for 1983. All right, so we found one leak right there. You can see the little bubbles, and that's in a really bad spot. All right, so we just converted these. One there, there, and over there. All right, so we ended up having to clean this thing all out. So we're checking out to see if we can find some bears. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right guys, so we're ready to go on a little trip here. We've got refrigerants, lots of tools, gauges, all kinds of stuff, parts. We're gonna go help some people out in the Appalachian Mountains down in uh, Eastern Kentucky, down in Lynch County, or Lynch, town Lynch. So let's go see what's going on. All right, so we're loaded up, full crud, ready to go. We are heading down the Interstate 75. We got one guy in front of us there rolling smoke. We're heading on down there. We got right at about five hours and 34 minutes area. I'll have to show you a little rolling smoke here in a little bit. So it'll be good to show. Bring the kids. Make you get sure you got your popcorn ready. I got my co-pilot here. This is the Moose. He's our maintenance guy. He, he's the one to hook me up with the refrigerator and freezer repairs we done. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You're welcome for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, anything I can do to help. Gosh, get over. City barbecue here. Got the pulled pork sandwich. Nice big old hunk of junk of monka. Cornbread. I'm sure this is totally good for my health. Trying to hammer this thing down. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's 8.17. We still haven't gotten started yet, but we've had breakfast. I got my bed made. I don't want too bad, does it? There's what I usually eat, but we got a little bit of eggs and sausage and stuff. Got eggs and all kinds of good stuff and stuff like that. So, we're ready to bounce out of here as soon as we get our orders of where we're going to. All right, so we got to say good old... Uh, blowing capacitor so that's a pretty simple fix all right so we got the capacitor on there this is a double-sided coil so we're gonna wash it out but this really is not the right weather to try to set up an oil furnace so this is the backyard literally right up the back side there what kind of metering device we got that's a great idea got a hog hair filter mm -hmm. cap two probably it's the line size is capped down from three eighths to something. Oh my, oh my. Yeah, it's a beauty. She's a real beauty, Clark. <laughs> Heck yeah, look at that. That's the way you do her. Yeah, take a look at that. Look at that. pipe behind you. Uh, a few, a few on me cleaned out. Where's the, yeah. Hello, boy. Yeah, sir, oh yeah, that's nice. I need replaced. As soon as you Touch it. All I'm going to do is we'll just make sure they know that this needs this. Oh my goodness, look at this barometric hole they got tied in here. These little holes saw. Wow, look at that. Oh yeah, that's... That's, that's plenty. Good. Did you already get in there in the filter yeah. area? Fan blades packed full of... No, they look good. They're pretty good? Fan okay. Good. There's the breaker box. This is the reason why we ended up doing it live. Oh yeah, good old... Water heater. Yeah, water heater still works too. Check that out. There's the oil filter. Haven't seen one like that before, but that one. Duck works all undersized. Looks like we got maybe five inch. I don't even look like six. This, I don't know. It's all good, dog. We're making it happen. We got some isolation relays in here. Oh, uh, fuel oil burner's locked out. Got the old flash. That's a fairly newer burner here in the last 10, 15 years. So it's got that anti-reset button. That'll keep them from killing themselves. There's your sub pump. Right back yeah, that's good. Bring it through here. 
That is... We could spend a month here just doing stuff, fixing things up. That is quite the, the feat. Wow, look at that rain head. They ran it through, through a piece of PVC pipe. Yesterday I knew not what one was, today I is one. Can you, uh, can you turn that air conditioner on for us? Yes. Super heat's 26, sub cooling's 11. We ain't off by much, but once we get that coil clean, though, we'll see whether or not that changes the story a little bit. It's probably all packed full of crud. We'll get a lose a lot of our artificial heat. You grab the tools? Sure. Victim number two. Compressor ain't running, so we gotta check her out, see what we got here. Coil's surprisingly clean. Well, unfortunately, it's got open winding, so that's the end of that one. They're going to need to replace the unit. The price of the compressor would not be worth it. This is a heat pump with uh, electric strips and air conditioning capable. Pretty nice unit in its day. Basically a first-generation PTAC. On to the next one. All right, so there's the outside of the building there. It goes down to there underneath the street. This is one of the other houses they're working on. They're rehabbing this here for like a uh, women's shelter after they get done with uh, rehab and stuff to kind of get themselves back online. So I believe they're just trying to get at least one section of it going so they can start using it. Kind of like a big old mansion entryway. Herring bone floors, check that out. Is that a new floor? It is. Nice. Can you see them? Yes. Let's take this thing outside so we can get her cleaned up. Not too bad for 1983. We got the coils cleaned out, both sides, got it all done up. Got the motors, there's a closed cell motors there. They got a little wet, not bad. We'll let them let set for a while, but we're not using any acid. And acid is usually what takes the motors out. Looks like it's never been screwed with, so I don't see a reason to tap it. It seems like it was nice and cold. I think just people don't understand it. Somebody put the control in wrong. You gotta put it in heat to do cooling, and cooling to put it in heat, but this, connection thing I got in here it kind of I don't know what they did I think they're there's no schematic and I don't want to spend all day we can get more things done this one works so we're moving on to the next all right so this one here unfortunately or fortunately I guess what do you want to call it actually works the way it should uh, they thought that you had to put it on heat to get cool or whatever we sat here and waited forever and started taking it apart see if we knocked off some wires and uh, it's working great in cool mode with it turned up to cool, which is kind of weird how they did that. It's a little bit weird. You see the cooling's to the right, warmer's to the left, which, you know, usually you see cooler to the left, but maybe it was made in a uh, left-handed nation, who knows. So anyhow, this one's working good. Coils are cleaned. We're gonna go check out a uh, mobile home unit that's leaking, and so we're gonna do lunch and head to that next. Let's head to the next one. Alright, so we've got this modular home back here. It's got a leaky coil, so they said. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that cool? They'd also take the, the uh, razor down through that stuff. So I'm pretty sure this is the guy's house. We'll just knock on the door and make sure it is. Sounds like it's a package unit. Alright, so he's gonna get that thing washed out. I'm gonna look for a leak. So we'll get the uh, leak detector out here. All right, so we got our DTEC 3. Let's give this thing a shot, see if we can find the leak. All right, let's see if it goes off when we walk out of the building. Okay, it's not a split system. What I've seen right off the bat, they didn't, they didn't uh, bring this over here to bring all the air through. So, looks like we've got leaks going on somewhere in this ballpark right here. So we'll scan this thing over. All we gotta do is shut her down. Give her a quick scan, see what we find. Of course, 
course, we just bring that fan all the time, so. 24.5. All right, so we found one leak right there. You can see the little bubbles, and that's in a really bad spot. And then the other leak, this is a uh, ICP, basically a carrier. So we've got another leak right right back here in the infamous sense. Oh, she didn't even have to get close. Look at that, it'll detect three fine in it before I even get up to the coil. So, yeah, we'll pull her back here and give her a moment, come back in. Yeah, we ain't even on that coil yet. We're, we're three inches away, so. Yep, gotta come into her fast and steady there. So, old DTEC 3 to the wind. Um, that probably don't drain so good because it's like uh, at an angle there. But they don't know what sheet metal is down here. So, the silver tape's all they used around the corners. So, he's gonna have some bales replace this because I don't have one of these on the truck. So, that wraps this one up onto the next one. All right, so we're heading back. That wasn't much we could do on that, the coil's leaking. Kind of going back to see what uh, what else they've got. I guess they got multiple different projects, so let's see. Got us an old coal mine here. Good thing I brought the saw. We was able to chop us up some wood and make this new air conditioner fit right in the wall. This is the one we found the compressor windings open earlier. So we got that in there, making it happen. What else have we got? We've got a school building that's been repurposed here. So we've got a train unit we're gonna look at, check out, see if there's anything we can do with it. Possibly has a bad compressor. We've got a lot of through the wall units here that uh, could use a good cleaning, probably. Just gonna see, we got him prior prioritizing what exactly needs to be done first, and you can tell that just a lot of them probably just need pulled out and cleaned. All right, so this one here, one compressor works, one doesn't, and circuit number two is low. So we're kind of looking for the leak. We noticed down here we got some oil on the bottom. Notice like there's a little bit of oil look on this uh, insulation. We don't know why it's there though, because it really shouldn't be anywhere else. Right in the middle. That'd be great if it's just a bad That's circuit number two. Is it? We'll cut that dog loose. Let's get in that thing. Make that bow wow bark. I haven't got hardly any footage at all. I just like good school here, man. Got a big old mountain in the background. I wonder if that foot football field's any good anymore. We use that for anything. This is the school stuff. Got a little little sniff in the sniff. Yeah, walking from somewhere else. Probably just floated across. It's probably Bluetooth oil. Yeah. And got a bad signal and got stuck here. That's more, that's like... I wonder if that's maybe from them oiling the bearings when they shouldn't have oiled them maybe and it flew off, who knows? I mean, seeing some of the things that we've seen, industry standards aren't really practiced. All right, so the uh, unit's low in charge. We gotta see if they wanna try to pick up some refrigerant. They got a friend of a friend who knows a friend in the back alley. So now we're looking at some exhaust hoods, or exhaust, exhaust fans. One there, there, and over there. See, that's a weird little red wasp. They wanna reach out and give you a little kiss. Where'd they go? There he is on the top, he just flew away. There's a copper wire holding the tensioner. Awesome. Got a little tensioner there. That probably came off somebody's car or something. That is original. That's Kentucky engineering there. <laughs> Man, I don't think that was original to the... Uh... It probably wasn't. I've always wondered why not just do that, but you know, why not? The tire coming out and putting the bolts on. The tire tighten them up, make it the easy way. Hi, right, wanna be on camera? You wanna be on YouTube, Mr. Wasp? There you go. So here's an update of what's going on. So we're gonna put 427A in here because that's what they had available. So we pulled a vac on it. Had a funny feeling that uh, it might be restricted. And sure enough, filter dryer's restricted. Now the question is, is why? I'm not real sure. 
So we're pulling back out the 12 pounds, 10 ounces that I put in there, because I just got it as much as I could and filled it in there. So we're gonna get that out, we're gonna chop out the filter dryer. The guy at the building here has gone to pick one up from another company. This building, like I said, is an old school. They're using it as a teen outreach. And eventually it's gonna be turned into a foster home for kids. Abandonment rate down here in Eastern Kentucky is pretty high. It is a Christian organization and uh, they're, they're working on doing that. We're doing what we can. Like I said, we're doing all this for free. They just happened on this particular one. They're providing the refrigerator, another guy is. I didn't wanna use all the R22 up on this one when I had other window units I got to do yet as soon as we uh get it done i mean i i it's a 3d scroll i'm not 100 positive if this will work with it there's no internet down here i tried getting on their wi-fi that's not working but at this point you know they do karate down here in the uh gym area this is like i said the school's been shut down i think since the ni early 90s it ain't like they got the money to do a bunch of work so we're just trying to make it work as long as we can and kind of go from there sometimes you just can't make everything perfect you just got to do what you can to make it go all right so we got this thing cut loose systems recovered it definitely was plugged up you can try blowing through this thing and all the oil stuck in it it just barely comes through at all half tempt to cut this turkey open we're gonna take a look inside there and see what we got because we're waiting on another one yet all right so we're evacuating this thing down got the filter dryer replaced had to reduce it there just to leave it or evacuate and dropping down getting her there so there's the quickest way just pull it all back through again then we'll suck that back into it and you use as much as we can get back into the system hopefully we don't have any restrictions on the uh orifices it's only able to get about 10 pounds in there liquid that is some wild stuff let's go ahead and get this other tank hooked up all right so we got our superheat right around 12 degrees area Subcooling is right around 20, which ain't bad. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hook onto this other unit, which is R22 still. We've got everything back on there, so we're gonna check this one out real fast. A little zipperoo in there. Ah! Tell YouTube land, look at him. One of your students are gonna see this. <laughs> Let's put his name on there, make him famous. Oh! We'll blank that out. All right, let's see where we're at here. We're on 22, so super heat's 31, 25 subcooling, head pressure's a little low. We've got to bleed our gauges out here. You can go by the charts if you want. That's the way it technically supposed to be done. But we're running a 31 degree VAP or orifices. I don't think, I don't think we even have a chart on this thing anymore. Um, the thing only held, technically, we had to adjust it and take some back out. Um, 13 pounds out of the 17. So it's just a little less than probably 79% of the total charge. So I don't know, I've never used this 422 or 427A stuff before. I don't know if it's that good. Added about a pound and a half to this thing. Kind of waiting to see if the superheat changed a little bit. I know you aren't supposed to do it by superheat, but we have no chart. Let's see what kind of water we're pulling out of this system. That's the humidity removal right there, buddy. Not really the right trap for it either. So we got that thing running, had about a 20 degree superheat. Brought the building down to 68 degrees, which is great. He's happy, I'm happy, we accomplished one good one. We're gonna head back to camp and uh, kinda eat and then we'll have whatever going on is going on. So other than that, we'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow or later tonight, depending on what's going on. All right, so we're down here in the basement of this old school. That is coal-fired boiler. Comes in, got the uh, fan, shoot through the tube, and boy, that had to been a good time to clean out. That had to been so much fun.
Here's your loop pumps. Control. Loop so pumps. How would you have loop pumps on a? You know that steam is water. It's not water. I was gonna say, since when does steam have water pumps? They don't. You know, you know what the Hartford loop is, right? The Hartford Insurance Company had to invent how to make these things not explode. Oh. So they would take the loop from the top and take it to the back of the boiler to prevent it from exploding from the cold water hitting the hot chamber. What happens is these can, uh, if they run themselves dry and then all of a sudden the water comes back and hits that hot metal, it'll explode and that blows the scrap metal everywhere and that's how you get your bomb. Ah, okay. So the Hartford Insurance Company after having, because they were having explosions all the time, and they were trying to figure out ways to get rid of that. So they came up with the Hartford loop, which came standard. So this is the Hartford loop. It comes up the top, comes right back down to the return. And that way it never completely runs dry. This is another building we're working on doing the lights and stuff. So boiler kill switch. Get you some. Here we go, inspection. Yeah, what was the last day? It looks like maybe a 99. 1999. Expire day show one. So this is 20 years ago. That wasn't that long ago. So this is the school we were working in yesterday. Lots of things that need to be done. There's the Alabama swing we talked about last time. Sure, why not? All right, so we just converted these all over to LED lighting. So we had a bunch of ballast to remove. Got them all cleaned out, so now they're gonna be saving some money there. The bulbs are... Nice and bright, and they are wired for two right now. They're wired for four, but they're gonna be able to run just two plenty of lighting in here. All right, so we ended up having to clean this thing all out, and we did make ice, not a crap load of ice, but we did make ice. It looks a lot better than it did. It was pretty dirty. Definitely had to soak that uh, probe there. Got it adjusted. Somebody screwed that all up, and the other guy said that the uh, control board might be bad, but it was just mainly the sensor there nice thickness probe was too uh too dirty and it definitely wasn't adjusted right so got that going we at least got that finished up for them so we're checking out to see if we can find some bears and we're kind of crawling up the hill here and they got the van door open there and uh they're, they're trying to sneak up on them Keep your hands it's on the all right. steering wheel. All right, so here's where we went. We went down this hill, yeah, as you can see. So. Lord, please keep me safe, Lord. Keep me safe. Don't pray. Keep me safe. <laughs> Climbed up without slipping at all. Not bad for street tires. We climbed right up that thing. Not bad at all. So that's it for bear watching. All right, today we are tearing into a window unit that they use in one of their shops. Can't tell. It's definitely not getting hot, but it's pumping. You can hear it running. I have a feeling it's probably a little unrefrigerant, unfortunately. Yeah, see right there? It's starting to freeze up. Haven't gotten a lot of video here so far, but a lot of it's just, you guys already know how to do it, so we're just kind of showing what we're getting done more than how to do it. R32. I'm not even sure what R32 is. So I'll have to look that up. All right, so just check the spec sheet on this. This has very similar pop properties to 410A, and since we're not gonna get 32 anytime soon, and since this is probably a $100 to $140 unit, it was just built not too long ago in 2019, I'm gonna probably pull the refrigerant out and switch this thing over to 410A and see how it does. Yeah, it was manufactured December of 2019, so 2021. So we're not even a year and something old, this thing's already jumped, so that's probably why somebody gave it to him a bit got us a tap brazed on there going to wash this nasty coil out see if we can make this thing run it don't look like it but it's clean so we got that cleaned up pulling it back on this thing we're gonna juice it up see how it reacts and kind of go from there so so far we've added nine ounces and three quarters this holds around 6.8 and the specs i'm reading on this thing it supposedly has high head pressure normally 32 does 
Um, got a 48 superheat, 17 degree evaporator. Basically, I'm trying to get it in there with the superheat or try to get it maybe in the 20s and uh, see how we do from there. This is a capillary tube system, maybe maybe a little higher. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. So we're slowly nipple and diamond it in. I started with it less than uh, refrigerant. This is not the right way to do it, but the alternatives throw it away. So I don't know if you've watched the beginning of the show or not, but there's just not a whole lot to pick from around here for what we want or need. Most things here have been donated and some of it's been, you know, given to them broken and you're trying to make it work. And uh, if I can squeeze out maybe a couple months of use out of this thing, and you know, that was a couple months they didn't have. Um, you may disagree with my philosophy on this, but it's not like the local hardware is going to have this refrigerant that I need. And from what I've read, it's kind of hard to even find. That's what we're doing. If you don't like it, sorry. You don't have an understanding of what's going on here. Then you should probably just stop the video and not watch it. Otherwise, continue watching on. Let's continue to see what we can do with this thing. We're running about a 29 degree evaporator. Okay, so I've been scanning this whole thing over and uh, I haven't cut, picked up one leak. All right, so we've got us an LG here. I went ahead and popped the cover off of it. They claim that they supposedly never used it, but you can see the uh, hack blue group, group gloop crap there. They didn't valve it off, so they didn't front seat it. And yeah, so it's been exposed to the moisture all that time. So what I'm doing now is checking for resistance to ground in between the leads, make sure it's all equal. Got the head over there, which it's been screwed together. My feeling is it probably was a leaker and they took it out and uh, donated it. Um, they said it runs. They also told them it never been ran before. So I don't believe that part, but I gave the board a sniff. The board uh, doesn't smell burnt, smells normal. So I'm gonna check this uh, grounding. So we had 3.1 ohms to uh, each individual lead, nothing to ground, so we're good there. Gonna find out what we need for wiring on this. And then uh, we're gonna go get some flare nuts for it when we go to look at the uh, guy's uh, compressor that we just got done checking his window unit for. All right, so we just finished up on that. I just took this cover off here, and so we're checking this thing over. Looks like they got an electronic air cleaner or something built into this thing, which is very unusual. Never seen one of those before. All right, so we're trying to find a flaring nut. So I've got a, some regular bolts here and stuff to pick from. Might have got lucky. It looks like 3 8 and quarter right there, I think. Well, maybe. Yeah. Three eighths and quarter. Boy, he's quick. Look at him, Johnny on spot. Let's see if this thing will match up here. So here should fit right there. Put it on straight. There we go. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And this one right here. Look at that. You must pray for a little bit in the elevator. <laughs> How cool is that? They even got Wagos here. Check that out. Heck yeah. That's what you need. Do it yourself electrical. There you go. That's all you need. We can mount that thing on the wall somehow. The roof jack thing. All right, so we went and got some angle iron. I chopped out a chunk out of the middle and we'll make this into the bracket. People that donated the piece didn't donate the back bracket because they must not have thought about it. So we're gonna make this into this as best we can. And unfortunately we don't have no high voltage wiring, uh, 230 volts to run outside. So unfortunately we're not gonna be able to run this thing, but we can at least get it piped in. Train line ran and evacuated and hopefully charged if we can find a data tag on it. All right, so we're putting this mini slit in, we're coming through the wall here. There's already a hole that was already here in this thing. So we're coming through with that. It's gonna be mounted out here on this roof. We're gonna put some four by fours in there. We already fought the wasp, so we have the wasp spray there. Unfortunately, nothing's gonna be perfect. I mean, as you can see, nothing is perfect. So you just gotta, kinda gotta make the best of what we got here, you know what I'm saying? So it's not perfectly square, things aren't perfectly straight. I mean, it's just, unfortunately, if you got used equipment, you just gotta do it with what you got to work with. Yep, yep, chop it. Uh, I wanted uh, <clears throat> stranded wire. So we're going with extension cord. So we'll have that. We'll have to run a dedicated ground. Um, that's for the head. The head's not gonna pull any amperage. There's no rating plates on anything. We have no instructions. 
I'm gonna go off of what we would normally do on with a um, Mitsubishi. So right now what we're doing is getting the uh, flaring tool, which, you know, we had to pick up a cheap flaring tool because I uh, asked what we were doing and we didn't know we were gonna be doing this. And so I didn't bring a flaring tool. I'm not usually an installer, so flaring tool is out here, right here. Found the best we could get at one of the hardware stores. It's not a great one, it's probably gonna leak, but you know, it's all I got to work with. You know, we stopped at AutoZone, checked out those, they had double flaring ones, but like I said, doing what we can with what we got. All right, looks kind of cruddy. That is not what I like, but like I said, I had been working at this for several days trying to get a list of what all I needed to bring. It'll work. Matches up fairly decent. I used the wire brush wheel to clean this up a little bit on the uh, drill. Best we can do with what we got, Nylog's gonna make it all better. All better. We got our good extension cord there to power this head. We're looking good. Figured the line set make a great ground. <laughs> well, we'll run a dedicated ground. Look at that, I got Jenner junk. Jenner junk generator. You think they'll have a canary? I hope. Those personal monitors aren't worth it no more. Canary's cheaper and keeps you company. Yeah, you just go into a little <laughs> hole a little bit and come right back out. So they did mold. But, no wonder why the thing but, fell on them. But this is a section. This right here is just showing what this tour is. This tour is very dark. It is cool. It is going to be bumpy. This being on an actual rail system, it is going to beat and bang, jerk, and pull a little bit. If you want to take any pictures or video, feel free to do so. The only thing that I ask is that you do not turn a flashlight on. And please hold on to your phones and cameras. Okay? Do I have any questions before we get started? Finding here a more and more it's going deeper and deeper right now. And more and more coal keeps pouring out. We're changing how the mining is being done. Too. How many feet separates the two? The mine down below us, the BC mine, is about 30 feet. And then the one above, above us is about 100 feet. The one above it is about 1,000 feet. How much coal is still left in this mountain? At least. Uh, well, just this mine alone, at least 120 million tons. When you do a room and pillar operation, you can only mine out up to 50%. This is what we're working with, and uh, we're just trying to get this thing to come out down the wall and come across and down to there. I don't know if the line height is gonna be that big of a deal that we don't have it, because like I said, we did not know this was gonna be done. So far, we kind of got it East in here, going across as tight as possible. He's getting the line going across. This, under normal standards, would not be how I would do it, but I don't know how else you're going to do it. Normally, you would come with materials and everything, and it's just not the case. So, take it easy, guys, on the comments down below that I'm a hack or whatever, because I almost don't want to show this. It's, you gotta remember what we're here to do. We're just here to help where we can help. There's always somebody watching you. Look at that. She's watching me. So I don't know if that's the model number there. There's nothing, no data tags. I don't know if the people that gave this away took them off thinking they're being slick so that somebody wouldn't sell it or what. That's pretty shady. We're starting to make some progress here. We got the line set brand. I'm not an installer, guys. We're just trying to make the best we can of it. That's something you've probably heard a thousand times so far. So, it, uh, we don't even know if this thing runs. That's what's so bad. We have no idea if it runs. And whoever the shyster was that decided to remove the name tag on this thing, the data plate, because I've completely taken it apart. I had to go inside and look at the, at the compressor to find out how many BTUs it was. That's how bad it is. I don't see anything in here. And like I said, that right there is the only thing that's on it. And I searched that and I can't find nothing on it. I'm not sure what to do about it. So we're just gonna pull back on it and throw some refrigerant in it. So it just, this really sucks because you, cause you know that uh, these guys were a hack that did this. Anybody that puts that crap on a brass cap's an idiot. 
been pulling down on this thing a few times and I've been valving it off, seeing where we're at, and it comes up, but eventually slows down at about, you know, 2,000 area. So we're just gonna keep on letting this thing run. Hopefully we'll get the, as much moisture out as we can. Um, we usually, uh, today's the day, it's our last day, and we actually stopped at noon, so we're still going. Uh, we went and did a mine ride in a real cold mine and came right back and uh, trying to knock this thing out. Don't even know if this thing runs. It was never valved off. Some people just donate stuff that, you know, I don't know, I'd almost be embarrassed to give somebody something that if it don't work or if you don't know it works. But I guess that's how people are, I guess. I don't know. You would think that if it was a professional company, they would have cranked it in and the refrigerant charge would be in it for it to not have any charge in it and they uh, valved it off. I mean, you just, it just, everything about this screams no. And I wasn't gonna do it. Um, like I said, the window unit there is what they have in that room now. It doesn't do it. It's such a distance away. But hopefully this, this works out for me to be able to heat the room too. Cause like I said, this is a heat pump. So we're just gonna wrap this thing up here on this particular one and head on to supper here and let this thing run and see what we can hit. I'll probably just let this thing run while we're gone. Putting a roof on this so keep the bears out of it. Too dark to take the trash there now. Yeah. Y'all gonna install a light in there? Put the garbage. Well, just like the day we came, the day we'll leave. So we've got everything loaded back up. Time for it all to start going back out into the truck. We'll get loaded up. And head on back. It's right around 6:30. I'm gonna leave by no later than 8. We're eating at 7:30. And we're going to head straight back. We're all gassed up, ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this thing loaded up. Truck's a little bit of a mess. Got to clean some of this crud out. Didn't need any of these motors, so they're all going to go back to the shop. So we're going to go down here and double check this house. Kind of show some of the progress we just did. Just needs a little lipstick yet on her, but it's good enough to keep the rain off your back. Do they even do they have this locked up? Ah, yep. oh, you know somebody's, somebody always forgets a window though. Got all the baseboard trim in there, a lot of painting. So a lot of stuff got done. And here's the house we were staying in. And my LG unit is right there. Hopefully it runs. You can see where the uh, line set comes through there. I think Denny's up there. Actually Denny, is that Denny or is that woman? She's talking to the birds or something. But yeah, that's it right there. But that's the porch of Solomon. That was a medical hospital for the coal miners. Built in 1920 something. And the back side of the porch, but you can see this normal right here, just have a 10 foot wall. And up you go. Hold that a second, I'll take a picture. We never went down there. Fortunately the water line shut off, we're all out here. They got a furnace in here. It's already ducked up. Oh yeah, it's an American Standard. It's insulated duck, all flex. Looks like it may have been gutted already. Electrical box, I don't know if that's even used anymore. There's the water lines. There's the pooper line. There's the new pooper line. So, yep. They had uh, boiler heat. All right, well, that's enough of that. I'm good. That's an old coal chute there, isn't it? Uh, this here's the, for the, to get down in there, but the chute's over here. Yeah. Yep. All right, so like I said, we did what we could do with this thing. I'm gonna leave this next turkey a note. It's got it marked, it's 410A. It's date, it's evacuated and charged. And I was here. So anyhow, guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. We're ready to roll. So that'll be the end of the trip other than the trip going back. Mission accomplished as best as we could with what we had to work with. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give back more than you take. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one.